In 80 days, adventurer and award-winning filmmaker Paul G. Roberts retraces the global footsteps of Phileas Fogg, hero of Jules Verne's most famous work. the Suez Canal and its connection to Phileas Fogg. Now the Suez Canal, it opened in 1869 and Phileas Fogg, believe it or not, sailed through it just three years later after it was opened in 1872 as he left the European continent heading through Egypt's Suez Canal then around the Arabian Peninsula um, heading for India. So obviously it's a man-made canal and as I said it connects the Mediterranean Sea to the Indian Ocean um, through the Red Sea and it has an intriguing story. You know, it's not just an intriguing story in the 80 days context, it's actually an intriguing story about what happened and what it unlocked for the possibilities of world travel um, or world trade more to the point because it enabled a direct route for shipping between Europe and Asia, effectively allowing from the passage of the North Atlantic to the Indian Ocean without having to circumnavigate the African continent. And, you know, going around the Horn or the Cape of Africa was a scary proposition for, for ancient mariners and probably mariners to this very day. Um, the waterway has been vital for international trade and as a result, has been a very contentious um, item which was in the centre of conflict since it opened in 1869. There were wars fought after it and there was all the whole backdrop of colonialism and the French owning a big chunk of it and the power play for all the, the desert kingdoms that didn't want to know about that kind of stuff. <laughs> It was inaugurated in, in 1869, um, as I said, 
And it wasn't just a technical achievement that connected the Red Sea to the Mediterranean or the East to West. In the Arab world, as you can imagine, it was an inflammatory symbol of European imperialism. And it worsened as it was also built by a Frenchman, Ferdinand de Lesseps. And it was a majority owned by France. So with all the drama over oil and you know that, that sort of drama of colonialism and um, of these desert kingdoms, you can imagine it was a very sensitive topic, a very sensitive thing to deal with. And Egypt was ruled at one point by Britain and France, and the canal, obviously, has been the source of tensions for over a century. So back to our story, Phileas Fogg arrived in Suez aboard the SS Mongolia and it was six and a half days of steaming after he left London. And as to seeing the town on the way through, um, Mr. Fogg wouldn't have done that. He wouldn't have even thought to have done it because that was the thing you set your manservant to do, to go and you know, take care of business in, in town. Um, their servants visited the countries as they passed through, got provisions and the like. So today, here I am standing beside the Suez Canal in the desert just after dawn, and it's a bizarrely eerie kind of experience. Here you can watch the northbound convoy of container ships go through. These massive, massive cargo ships lumbering along in this canal. And there's not so much as a single passenger ship in this convoy um, this morning. There's 15 massive container ships, one rumbling past every seven minutes um, and off into the morning mist. The, the days when you could hop on an SS Mongolia or even a regular P&O or Union Castle service a long since over. Nowadays, there are cruise ships and there are cargo ships, and not a else in between. And there's no one else out here by the canal where the rusting sections of a pontoon bridge and the dugouts and trenches and blockhouses are the reminders of the bitter fighting that took place only 15 years ago. The whole place looks like some bizarre World War II war museum. And going past, the ships pass at a stately pace. They almost look like mirages coming out of the desert. I've never seen anything like it. It is estimated when they were building the Suez Canal that tens of thousands of Egyptian peasants died um, from the 400,000 who were mobilized to actually dig the canal. That's a pretty radically gruesome statistic. So in terms of geography, the Suez Canal stretches 120 miles from Port Said on the Mediterranean Sea in Egypt, southward to the city of Suez, located on the northern shores of the Gulf of Suez. And the canal separates the bulk of Egypt from the Sinai Peninsula. It took 10 years to build and was officially opened 17th of November, 1869. So the interest in a marine route connecting the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea, it dates back to ancient times and a series of small canals connecting the Nile River and thus by extension the Mediterranean to the Red Sea were in use as far back as 2000 BC. However, a direct connection between the Mediterranean and the Red Sea was considered impossible over concerns that they sat at distinct levels of altitude. Therefore, various overland routes using horse-drawn vehicles and later trains were employed, most notably by Great Britain which conducted significant trade with its colonies in present-day India and Pakistan. So the construction of the Suez Canal, it began at the northernmost Port Said end of the canal, 
in 1859. And as I said, the, the excavation work took 10 years and an estimated 1.5 million people in total actually worked on the project. Unfortunately, over the objections of many British, French and American investors in the canal, many of these were slave labourers and it's believed that tens of thousands died by working on the Suez from cholera and other causes. Political turmoil in the region negatively impacted the construction of the canal. Now back then, Egypt was ruled by Britain and France and there were several rebellions against the colonial rule. This, coupled with the, the limitations of construction technology at the time, caused total costs of building the canal to balloon to $100 million, more than double the original estimate. In 1956, a dispute over the Suez Canal in Egypt led to international crisis and war. Two fading colonial powers, Britain and France, expected an easy victory over Egypt, but were forced into a humiliating withdrawal as the world's new superpowers flexed their muscles. It was a stark sign that the age of European imperialism was over and that a new international order had taken its place. Little remembered today, the events of 1956 had huge consequences for Britain and France, the Arab world, Israel, and the United States of America. This is the story of the Suez Crisis, whose fallout shaped world affairs for decades to come. So in 2023 today, there's an average of 50 ships navigating the canal daily, and they're carrying some 400 million tonnes of goods per year. In 2014, the Egyptian government oversaw an $8 billion expansion project that widened the Suez from 61 metres to 312 metres for a 21 mile distance. The project took one year to complete and as a result, the canal can now accommodate ships to pass in both directions simultaneously. But despite the widened route, in March 2021, an enormous container ship heading from China got stuck in the canal and blocked it, um, blocked 100 ships at each end of the vital shipping artery, and the incident nearly disrupted global trade for a week. And that's the end.